Hey, this is Ryan Jones with Serverless Guru. In this video, we're going to be covering serverless plugins, uh, what they do, and how you can actually use them in your own projects. So first off, um, the serverless framework uses something called plugins to allow the open source community to contribute and create things that the serverless framework team uh, may want to implement, but may not have time to. Um, also, underneath the serverless framework is CloudFormation, and CloudFormation doesn't always support all the features needed to do every task, right? So um, that's where plugins come in, and plugins are really cool. Um, as you can see in the documentation here, at, um, if you, if you uh, went onto Google, you can search for serverless plugins. It'll come up with this page, and you can see that all you do is you install the plugin, and then you can add it to your serverless file. And then from there, you can add multiple plugins. Um, you can even write your own plugins. Um, basically, how this works is that in CloudFormation, there's something called lifecycle um, events, and you can hook into these lifecycle events to do different actions. So. One plugin that I've used before is called, um, let's see, serverless plugin script, I think. Yeah, serverless plugin scripts. Let me actually open their GitHub. So this is really cool because it allows you to, you can install their plugin, add it to the plugins uh, section in your serverless.yaml, and then you can actually add this custom scripts um, where you can actually pass it a hook. And if you look back here, this deploy create deployment artifacts, that's a lifecycle, it's a lifecycle hook. Um, and then they have these different options. So you can do after deploy functions, deploy functions. Um, there's even a cheat sheet um, that you can look up, serverless plugins, cheat sheet. And the cheat sheet is great because um, it allows you to see um, the different types of lifecycle hooks. So these are all lifecycle hooks. Um, so you can do before deploy, you can do it during deploy, after the deploy finalizes. You can do deploys at the different stages of when uh, serverless is deploying your functions. Um, you can also do when it's being removed or rollbacked or invoked. And all these can be custom actions. And then coupled with um, the serverless plugin scripts, uh, basically you can pass in a different hook here and then you can run commands. So this is just like regular bash commands or you could actually run like a bash script um, or a Python script, pretty much anything you want to run, you could run it from here. So one case is like, let's say you wanted to update your website, but then maybe also um, you want to like run tests on it or something um, before it deploys, um, you could have testing in here. Um, so you could say, uh, before before deploy or something, like run tests on my code, make sure it's good to go. Um, that's just like a small little thing. Obviously, if you have the capability of writing anything you want, then you can really cover um, almost every area that you want to just by using this one plugin that allows you to write scripts um, that run during the deployment. So that's super cool. Um, so definitely check out serverless lifecycle cheat sheet. Um, at the very bottom, these people have a discussion. Um, they say, uh, if another plugin hooks, um, so this one right here, after deploy finalize. So if you're trying to actually create a, um, if you're trying to run a script at the end, at the very end of your deployment, this is a great one to like kind of grab. Um, so just go to the cheat sheet, kind of scroll down after deploy finalize. Um, and so what you would do is you would pass that in here, hooks after deploy finalize and then run your commands. So I've done things like updating policies, um, doing, uh, creating an, you know, on S3, they have events that you can add. So uh, let's say you want your S3 bucket to invoke a Lambda function to do something like take an image, a full size image, and then, t and then create a thumbnail out of it. Um, well, that's where you could have something at the after deploy finalize where it would actually, um, uh, yeah, basically, do that, yeah, that makes sense. So, 
Um, no, sorry. Um, sorry, the S3 event would basically be, you would be writing code to update the S3 bucket and then add that capability where it's going to invoke a Lambda function. So the S3 bucket, um, it basically has a setting on it that allows it to choose a target um, after a file gets uploaded. And so to do that, that's where you would add a script where it would actually add that functionality to the bucket itself. So this is cool. Um, let's go back to the serverless framework side and keep going through it. Um, so this is kind of an overview of how it actually is structured if you're creating your own plugins. Um, so nesting components, um, defining options, serverless instance. So yeah, so if you want to read more about this, um, definitely check it out on their page. There's also two links here. Um, so how to write your first plugin. Um, this is cool. Uh, this will allow you to actually start creating your own plugin. So as you're using the serverless framework and you see that, oh, there could be opportunity for people to do this in a, in a more automated way without doing the manual steps, then you can create a plugin around that um, and actually submit it for you know review and all that stuff. So that's super cool. Um, so let's jump into a project and what we're going to do um, yeah, what we're going to do in the future project is we're, or future video is we're going to actually uh, try out some of these plugins. Um, the first thing that we can do is we can run a basic, um, uh, let's run this basic after deploy finalize using the serv pl serverless plugin scripts uh, and just kind of show what that looks like. So um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.